Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Eyes Up Here. I'm Lindsay Paylos. Today in the Focus TV studios, we have my best friend back. Welcome back, Shy. Hi, y'all. Shy, back again. Oh, shit. Um, today, we have to, we're actually going to pour a drink. We're going to pour one out. First of all, thank you, Focus TV studios, for the spa girl cocktails for the day. Shit. <laughs> I'm not drunk, I swear. Not yet. Okay, that's us pouring the drink. Is this a drink or a shot? I think it's um, like vodka blended, but we can drink it straight, but it should be strong. Okay. Wait, let's just take a sip to try. I'm so nervous. I'm going to drink on camera. (laughs) Ready? Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, doable. Ooh, yeah. Oh, it's really good. Super easy to drink, too. Oh, wow. Okay, so I had a plan for this episode. Um, I fucked up in no time. (laughs) Well, that's part of the plan. Um, so there's been so much going on in the uh-huh. news lately. We have this guy running for Supreme Court, Brent mm-hmm. Kavanaugh. I don't know if it's Brett or Brent. Don't care either way. Um, and he's been allegedly, he's harassed someone before, Dr. Christine mm-hmm. Ford. And so there's just a lot of talk in the news with that. And we've also had Bill Cosby get sentenced. I have so much to say about that. Oh, my God. Okay. I have so, see... A lot of what's come up, I feel like, on Twitter and on Instagram have been um, believing survivors. Mm-hmm. How 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 long is too long to tell a story? Why does it matter? Yeah. Um, but basically, a lot of people think a lot of people think since the Me Too movement, we're kind of on a witch hunt. Yeah. And I feel like what um, maybe half of the public doesn't get is how much, how often assault and really deeply inappropriate things happen to women. Yeah. And they're women that you know, they're your sisters and your friends and your mom. Um, and they're people like me and you. Mm-hmm. And we've never even really compared all of our stories. But my idea was we could sit here, just ping pong stuff that we personally have been through. We're not going to, I mean, we can talk about the case going on right now, but mm-hmm. I feel like it's beaten to death. But yeah. I just want to talk about how common stuff, how common and annoying this stuff is. And so for every time we have a new story, we're going to take a big-ass sip of this. Well, I'll be taking sips randomly, but... Yeah, um, me too, probably. <laughs> but no, it is... Yeah, I understand that. But it is a lot that's going on that needs to either be addressed or, mm-hmm. you know... Yeah. Because my idea is, like, there's so much we don't say. So people... It's all... Oh, it's all coming to light. It's a witch hunt. But there is so much that we haven't told. Yeah. Like... And I think women around you often have all of these stories that you haven't even heard because yeah. you don't even ask. So that's what I want to do. And I want to talk about that with you. So where does it come from? Where do, where does the entire like uh, basis of how we got to not speaking, you know, how we got to, I mean, how we got to speak up? Where did the Me Too movement even come from? You know, like that's where you have to get down to it. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, well, that was, I mean, Harvey Weinstein and some celebrity women. Mm -hmm. But wait, okay, first of all, (laughs) I had Lauren Drain fit on my last show. Um, And we got to talking about jobs in Hollywood. This is the perfect segue into this conversation. Because remember when you moved here? Mm, Oh, God. This is what you... What do you think (laughs) I'm going to ask? She knows. What do you think I'm going to ask? What are you going to ask me? Well, what does it have to do with? Jobs, creepy men, shit you don't tell? Korea town? (laughs) Ah! I told you guys. Yes. We know way too much about each other, y'all. This is ridiculous. But honestly, I mean, how many girls in LA have responded to that? Oh my Craig's God. Hat? So tell, tell everyone this story and we can take a sip because this is oh, yeah, story, this is number, story one. number one. Whee! Cheers. We're gonna God, get lit. I have like five stories after that one story. <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah. I know you weren't even thinking this story. Uh-huh. So tell me this story. I didn't even think of this. <laughs> when you when you were even telling me story, you were like, we should say stories and take shots. I was like, I don't really know, you know, like, but now oh, that the stories. way that you explain it, it's just like, okay, yeah, I get it. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, this is fucked up. So, <laughs> so when I first, when I first moved to LA, I was literally here for like two months, like mm-hmm. literally two months. And it was hard for me to find a job. Like it was very inconsistent. Like I came out here, you know, with bartender experience and service experience. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be good. No, everybody who had a, who, everybody who's been a server has been a server for forever out here. They don't lose their jobs so they know how hard it is to get them. Yeah. So I got this email, and this is when I had my email in my bio on Instagram. So I got this email, <laughs> and it was just like, uh, Koreatown needed 
Koreatown needed um, karaoke model, you know, tall, like slender. Like, I'm like, oh, perfect. They're like $60, $70 an hour. I was like, fucking right. Why not? Like, yeah, you know, and no this, one knows what this exactly, job means. So all, and I was like, okay, what, what do you do? Like hosting karaoke, needed for karaoke bar. I'm like, okay, cool. I can host karaoke. I'm going to get up, sing a little, you know. <laughs> she was down to sing karaoke yeah, to strangers. Yeah, I was down all day. I so, love you. <laughs> So I was like, so I, I emailed them back. I was like, yeah, you know, sure. Why not? Let's have a meeting, you know, or whatever. He was like, let's have a meeting. And the meeting, first red flag, the meeting was at like nine o'clock at night, which isn't bad because it's like a nighttime environment. So yeah. I was like, okay, I don't mind. Maybe. But it was like super. The first red flag should have been fucking Koreatown and karaoke. But look, nobody <laughs> knows that yet. But in Koreatown, that's literally a lifestyle. Like that's a thing. There's you know? a thing. Yeah. But um, so... I go there, I meet with him. The, the guy is literally like five feet tall. I'm 5'11", y'all. So he's five feet tall. He's balding. I just want you to get a visual of him. He's yeah. bald. You know, he's just like, he's he has this accent that I don't even know where it's from anymore. You okay. Know? So I am get there and he's just like, he's like, okay, good. He That's the first thing he says to me. Okay, good. And looks me up and down. And I'm like, okay. Ew. Yeah. Like he's, I'm like, okay, cool. So he starts doing like this. To, he touches the inner, like, what's this called? I have no idea. That part of your arm. <laughs> And um, he's just like rubbing on. He's like, you yeah. have to go to eyesuppeartv.com to watch. Exactly. Look, he's like, yeah, he's touching this part. He's doing like that. And he's just like, yeah, good. He was like, I love bones. He literally was like, I love bones. And I'm like, oh. I'm literally like, okay, what's this job consist of? So do you want my resume? Exactly. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, yeah. So what's the job consist of? So he's just like, he's like, yeah, let's just have a seat. So we talk about it, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, it's just karaoke. It's like you host it. It's private rooms. And it's like, um, you know. It's it's however many men that are in there, and they have like a few girls in their character. I was like, cool, it's gonna be women in there too. So this is gonna be a fun thing. I'm yeah. so stupid. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna have sake. Exactly. So uh, fast forward, we we end up going to the place where it's at. So it's some like I drive my own car. He asked me to ride one, and I was like, nah, I'm smart. Good. Yeah. So. We go there and it's like some hole in the wall, like hotel looking, like karaoke, like hotel in Koreatown. So I'm like, first of all, this is rag. This is some woo child, the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So um, we get there. I'm like, this is nasty. This this looks bad. So like literally, like they have section off rooms. They're like glass door. There's like glassware, but it's like a tent. So I'm like, okay, this is different, but whatever. I'm going to still just go see. Yeah. So he's, me and him, we go to a room. It's a secluded room and we sit down and they have like a little karaoke machine. They have like a table with a bar and all that stuff. So we sit down and he's like, all right, I have a, a big client coming in and you're about to see how it works. So this old fat ass, you know, <laughs> agent, Don't mince words. Yeah, exactly. You know, this man, <laughs> this, uh, he came in, he sat down and was like, okay, he didn't even say that to us. And so he's like, hmm. You know, that's just how he looked. He was just big and Asian. Okay, the client. The client. Okay. So next thing you know, like two minutes later, I hear a knock on the door, and it's five women. They line up. He literally is just like, yes, no, yes. And then he's like, no. No, it was it was one girl. He's like, no, 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 yes. <gasps> mean yeah exactly so like you're literally being like fucking like chosen you're in the, you're just standing there and then when they picked the girl the girl sat down and the other girls left she sat down the first thing she he fucking did he put his hand <gasps> in her shirt he did and they're literally talking like he's doing like that she's holding her nipple i'm holding my, my oh yeah i forgot i'm holding my <laughs> boob and i'm I'm squeezing it like and they're just like talking so i'm looking i'm getting i'm i'm fresh out of louisiana so i'm still ghetto as shit yeah you know what i'm saying so i'm looking at her like Let's 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 connect guys. Let's fight these niggas together. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, we gotta fucking do this. And so she just staring at me like, what are you looking at, bitch? So I was like, uh-uh. I was like, I literally stood up, I was like, get me the fuck out of here. Y'all got me fucked. You did up. not I'm, in front of the client and everything? Yes, I did. They were staring at me like I was a ghetto black girl. And look, I will be that. <laughs> I will fucking be that. So that was the one story. All right. Wow. But yeah, that's nuts, right? That's crazy. And this is this is a man operating a business, a business. allegedly, luring people in to essentially be I mean, at least she she seemed willing, like a willing participant. But I mean, you you really can't, you really should ask people if you, you should be have you know, clear, like, yeah. you know, like you should be more descriptive of the job. Title yeah, today, like instead of saying because those Cause without men can consent, that's anything. assault. Men can literally do anything. Like that man literally, like they're so they're so numb to that. It looked like because when oh, the, they were like the worker, the, yeah, yeah, like and then you come from you come from wherever you're from and you have no money. What if I was literally on my ass and I just accept that and I do that for money? And yeah, I find myself to sleep every night. Oh my god, I'm so happy you don't. Exactly. I mean, so you know, sorry you exactly. had to go through the K Town experience. God, it's not all Korea Town. It's just this situation yeah, and this guy. I've had so much fun doing karaoke in Koreatown. 
Oh, have you? Oh, I have. I'm doing what type of karaoke? Like I literally sing "Salt and Pepper." Push it is my favorite God, song. I know. If you want to know, mine is um, <laughs> so, fuck. It's it's one TLC song. I like so I creep. Yeah. Ooh. Be back down. And waterfalls. I can do the yeah, rap. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Anything Beyonce. Oh, <sighs> well, that was a good one story. What's yours? Should we start with like a workplace one? I have two. I have two with the workplace because we're on a workplace kick. Um, one was when we worked at Twin Peaks. Remember this? With the manager? I would- uh-huh. In a weird way. So this is this is a story about an abuse of power. <laughs> um, oh, oh. I worked at this bar. Shy and I worked at it together, a sports bar. It's called Twin Peaks. It was like mm-hmm. a Hooters on steroids, like just hotter yeah. outfits, better food. It was really, yeah. it was a fun job. I love that job. Yeah. I really liked the job. Um, your eyelashes look nice. Th- oh my God. Thank you. So sweet. Okay. Oh, should we take a sip before I tell the oh, story? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Cheers. Cheers. This is a fun podcast. Right. I'm going to slur. <laughs> mm. Okay. So we had this guy who was um, the lawyer for the restaurant. So he would handle all kind of, yeah, that guy. You know his name. I do. Rhymes with oh, Rob. He was- um, he was a lawyer for the restaurant? Yes. So this man, was, there was a, um, an oh, older gentleman that worked with the restaurant as their manager. I mean, uh, their lawyer. I'm sorry. Sam Lit. Mm-hmm. Um, so he had a close relationship with the owner of the restaurant, the man who f- fronted the money. Yeah. It's a corporate restaurant or franchise. Is yeah, that it's how it is? Franchise. Yeah. But anyway, so we, we were really familiar in the restaurant with the owner mm-hmm. and this lawyer guy. And the lawyer guy was an older man. He was actually known around town to pay girls. For what? I don't know. Kind of like a sugar daddy type thing. What? Okay. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I know who you're talking about, but I have another story too. This oh, is fucking nuts. Damn. Okay, we ha- we're going to have a lot. But he was known for like paying chicks, which is fine. So a lot of girls flocked to him. When he was in the restaurant, they were always like, ah, hi, whatever his name was. We'll call him Rob. Hi, Rob. Um... You know, what can I get for you, Rob? Like, they were really, really nice to Rob. Yeah. Because he was known as that guy. And if he didn't sit in my section, I didn't pay him attention. Like, my job was Never. to pay attention to the bar. Mm-hmm. If you're not my customer, you're not in my you're not in my vocabulary. Like, I'm just there to work. Um, and he got pretty – he sat at the bar before. Um, there were times when I caught him discussing my personal life. So he was getting into – Oh, he discussed everybody's personal life. Yeah. And I found it really odd. The man was um, late – I'm going to be, that was generous, man. He's early 60s. I mean, yeah, exactly. I was gonna say late yeah, I was gonna say no. The guy was a grown man, a really grown man. And so he would get into my personal life and kind of gossip with other girls about me. And it was stuff I'd kept hearing. And this guy is kind of influential in the restaurant that I work. Mm-hmm. So he started to sit at the bar and we have other bartenders who work. And I was like, you know, to make it comfortable, like you go wait on him because they have friendlier relationships with a guy. And I know him as a guy who's talked shit about me and kind of not harassed me, but in a way kind of tried to bully me in yeah, situations. Nice. And he's gotten other girls fired from that establishment before because he had issues with them. Personal issues. Yes. This and is I- this is a man. Man who's supposed to be I mean he's a lawyer for the restaurant he has got personal vendettas and issues with young beautiful waitresses so um he sat at the bar and I um I you know other people took care of it I kept doing my job and he ended up making a complaint about me to our owner like how pressed are you oh yeah and the owner was someone told me they said straight up um it was one of our GMs our, our manager and he was like you really need to make an effort to be um nice to him or you need to you you have to go be nice to him and um he kind of like he wanted he was essentially insinuating i needed to have a friendlier relationship with yeah. this man and i know this man to have paid girls and i know this man to have kind of bullied me before and i was mm-hmm. like no um that's not going to happen and I was a fantastic employee. Yeah, and what way? And and in what way is me doing my job ever a problem? Like, yeah, being your friend is not my fucking job. Yeah, he was always waited for. Even when he yes. came to the bar to sit and harass me, he was waited for on other people who knew him better. Because we used to do that as bartenders, we would all yeah. take our guests who who we knew better because that's yeah. how we made more money. Was, yeah. Um. But he ended up complaining about me, and I had a GM. Um, obviously a man, and then the owner, who was obviously a man, sit and try to tell me that I needed to establish a friendly, 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 shit, I'm drunk, right. a friendly That's relationship. Uh-huh. That was funny. A friendly relationship with this guy. And I was like, oh, hell no. I'm here to work. I'm here oh, to work a bar. No. I'm here to serve you dinner. 
I'm not here to make friends. Yeah, I'm and not this here guy's, to give fucking hand jobs behind the counter. Oh my god, took it too far. <laughs> Shy, <laughs> potty mouth. Stop. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. This is a family show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Cheers. Cheers. That's it. Okay, fine. Um. Anyway. Yeah, but anyway, I remember having a a WTF moment, and I was like, "Are you playing with me? Like, I'm a fantastic employee. Yeah. You want me to have this relationship with this guy who's a creep and a bully? Absolutely not." And I was upset. And I called my mom and I was like, mom, like, this is the situation. They want me to be extra friendly with this guy. Like, what do I do? Um, This is a pickle. And my mom was like, you turn around and you go in there and you tell them you'll sue the brace off that motherfucker. If they tell you to be friends with somebody again or like whatever. Because it was was very clear cut what they had done. And Mm -hmm. they were they were making a hostile work environment for me. It was really uncomfortable. It was like really uncomfortable. And I literally went in there and I said the same <laughs> shit. And I was like, I'm going to sue the brakes off this motherfucker. I swear to God, when I tell you, they weren't just nice. They were apologetic. Yeah, of course. I was, and other girls have lost their job over that man. Mm-hmm. I know a girl personally who lost her job because she didn't have a friendly relationship with this man. And it's it's not being polite. It, they wanted an extra friend, yeah, ass kissing yeah. kind of flirty, gross relationship with this guy and that goes into oh. entitlement like how fuck how entitled do you think you are to to get somebody fired from their job yeah. like you, you have you're a lawyer and you eh, i can't understand man a man's entitlement is on another level a white man's entitlement but men's entitlement entitlement in general yeah is just like i have a theory that that's pretty much the root of all these, all problems in life men no entitlement specifically oh yeah yeah i feel like entitlement specifically is an issue i feel like as girls we're so used to being rejected yeah. and told no and we're not good enough we're really like never good enough yeah so we're used to things like that where we can handle rejection especially relationships but anyway that's my one work story but i have another one that's even worse all right listening okay okay my next one before another, i worked another at drink okay cheers i like the little clink <laughs> you're not drinking it at all i'm gonna drink let's chug this one okay i just took a strong sip i feel like i'm gonna get drunker under the lights too because it kind of <laughs> it gets you drunker it does <laughs> okay take it. so the next one when i was in high school no not right out of high school i was like 19 i got a bartending job at a dive bar outside of new orleans Mm-hmm. So there was this summer I would stay at my dad's. My dad lived in New Orleans and I would stay with my dad and I got a little bartending job. Mm-hmm. It was a hole in the wall biker bar <laughs> in Louisiana. So I'm talking ratchet. It was like, I mean, it was where bikers came. They got $2 Budweiser's. Oh, yeah. You know, dirty biker really mouths. Dirty. Yeah. Yeah. And I had never bartended before. So this man, um, he was a man from New Jersey who had just opened up this New Orleans bar. He gave me daytime shifts. So I literally went there and I can make like, 50 bucks a day and that was fun that was your first time bar that was out of high Mm -hmm. school yeah yeah and i was literally just like opening beers during the day for these biker people in louisiana you can bartend at 18 i know it's different out here you have to you have to be 21 to bartend so in in louisiana it's 18 yeah Yeah, i was young um anyway so we i would go there and i would work whatever and the owner was always there during my shifts and during the day and he um at least one day he encouraged me to drink and he was like, yeah, like, take this shot with me. And I'm like, cool, whatever. I get lit. And we get really, I mean, I get a buzz. Mm-hmm. And there's not much, I've never even told this story. There's not much going on in the restaurant or the bar. And he's like, hey, come to my office. I want to show you something. No. I've never even told this story in my life. Yeah, I've but, never even But I'm fine one. to tell it. But um, he was, he had porn on the computer. Yeah. You're lying. No, he literally had porn on and then he proceeded to go down on me. (gasps) But I was drunk and I was 19 and this was my boss. So I was was like, I was, it was hazy. I was like, what? uh Um, But I guess it impacted me because I never went back. I didn't go back. I never worked that shift again. Never called the guy. There was nothing. And I guess I was like over it after that. But I continued living my life. But like at 19, I think, oh, whatever a guy likes me and but now i'm like wow you lured a 19 year old to come work at your bar and then you gave her alcohol and then in the you went in the office and and it's just that's a lot and i was too stupid i feel like you're i mean low-key i'm sorry if you're young but you're stupid at 19 yeah you're gonna be dumb till at least now yeah at least like at least till today o'clock you're gonna be so dumb (laughs) And I was so dumb. And now, looking back, I'm like, whoa, that was messed up. 
No, that was I can't believe that. You never told me that story. Mm-mm. Yeah, I don't think I've ever told anyone. You told me that? I know. Wow, some type of way about that one. Well, because we all have these... No, that's no one not, wants to hear yeah, these no terrible one, no, stories. It's like, it's like, like, remember that story time we were watching TV? What's I mean, what? the movie. What? And then that story came <laughs> from one of our... <gasps> yes. Oh, yeah, my God. Okay, we can't it. talk about bring, that at all. We're not bringing that up. But that we'll shit tell you guys was wild. Yeah, one In 10 day. years, we'll tell you that story. <laughs> 10 years. Remember this? Yes, that's nuts. I can't believe that. Yeah. I've had, a, I've had a manager send me a dick pic before. And oh. I felt like the next day I literally felt so awkward. And then the fact <laughs> that it was so little too, I was just like, uh, like, no, I don't want to be your friend. Like, That's I don't inappropriate. Be it was so inappropriate. And it was at a bar like that too. So he sent me a dick pic and I was just like, oh, okay. And it's just like, what am I supposed to do with that? And he was like, I didn't say that. I was just like, okay, I'll He's cool. like, frame it. He, no, I didn't say that at all. I was like, okay, cool. And he was like, send me something. And I was just like, no, thanks. I can't. I'll see you at work. Like, it was so that awkward. That sucks. And it sucks for you because you want to keep your job. Exactly. All you oh. want to do is keep your damn job. And the places that we've worked, me and Lindsay have worked at, is just, those are places where it's like sex, low-key, se- like sex sales, you know? Yeah. And so we... I yeah. said this other day, I'm so tired of being nice to men sometimes. Like, why the <laughs> fuck do I have to flirt all the time yeah. just to, like, get a decent tip or look? I, like, you know, I feel like I'm... I'm. Oh. She's on one. I am. And I'm I love over, you. I'm over men sometimes, honestly. I've And I see... I always I have the same sentiments, but so many and so many of my listeners are men. So many of my life is men. Oh, yeah. And um, hey, y'all. I always, of course, want to disclaim. I'm not talking about you. When we when women tell stories, especially about assault or bad stuff they've been through or like mm-hmm. catcalling, or all this terrible stuff, people often respond with not all men. Yeah. I just want to clarify, we absolutely know not all men are yeah, terrible. Men are like we have amazing boys. lovers and boyfriends and bosses yeah. and friends. Um, and brothers. People, yeah, and, people know, that like we, we admire family, yeah. and are instrumental. Um, but but this is the truth. So us telling you about, the thing is, we know that not everyone does terrible shit, but it happens so much that there's, there's just no other word for us telling you that this sucks for us. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it sucks. See, I and when you mentioned catcalling, it made me think of something. Remember how they had that viral video going around that how catcalling was and how yeah. like, role reversal when girls would do it, they yeah. would feel some type of way. Yeah, I I'm indifferent about catcalling. Like, really? I, I you laugh at it. You're so funny. I get pissed. She gets fucking pissed, y'all. I get I, pissed. I laugh and I'm like, yeah, tell me more about how good I look. I Shy. love it. <laughs> Yes, it, so. it it gets it gets disrespectful when you touch me. Remember, I told you I seen that girl get knocked off off her ass <gasps> in um New Orleans. Wait, tell me this story. Let's take a, sh- a drink. Oh yeah, this is oh, another one. This is Ching. a good one. Cha-ching. Yeah, I like oh. stories that aren't just us too. Yeah, exactly. It's like- so y'all, New Orleans, Bourbon Street can get hectic. I have seen murder. <laughs> oh, literally, like murder, murder. Bloody, shot, bloody like, murder. Yeah, I've seen nuts. blood. I've seen a woman with blood gushing down her face. No person I've belongs that on mm-hmm. that street, but it's fun. <laughs> it's, it's very fun, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but so I'm I'm like literally 16 years old, and this has scarred me for life. That oh is God. why I am so nice to. Oh, men. you tell me the story. Tell me. I have, and it, and it, it literally like I will never forget it. So this girl is literally like she was beautiful. Like she was amazing she was drop dead and so like she had heels on which you should never wear on bourbon if you want to go to new orleans do not wear heels it, it, it sucks you know you want to look cute but just wear some flats yeah but um so her and her friends or whatever they're walking and this guy is cat calling her and not in a cat call him just like hey ma you look good he's like hey come here like grabbing her Ooh. arm grabbing her arm which is disrespectful yeah so that's when i would have been like nah she, she was she but she yanked her arm she was like she was like get the fuck off me and he was just like Bitch, you ain't that cute. <gasps> Literally punched her in her face. When I'm telling you her heels were still on the ground and her body was like five feet away. Uh, it was horrible and nobody did anything. They don't. They don't they didn't do a fucking they didn't do anything to that. And I was just like, I'm never gonna be mean. I'm yeah. never and you know I am never mean to men. Yeah. She was like blood everywhere. Ooh. Like her like his fist, one fist like knocked her nose out and her her lips automatic. I was like, Ugh. I can't, I can't believe, like, I, that scarred me. I was like, okay, I'm nice to men from this point forward. Just for your safety. Yeah, exactly. Which is crazy. Like, you, you literally have to fake being cool with disrespect oh and grabbing someone when they don't want it. I'm sure that's illegal in someone's book, but. It's, a, it, it should, yeah. You like, remember when me. we went to Chantal's birthday in Vegas? Yes. Do you remember what happened when we were at X, I think it was XS. They're always doing some fuck shit there. You remember? No. Well, it's cheers. Me. This is the next one. Oh, cheers. Ding. Ding. I like this noise. Can I get some more ice? Oh, could we have some more ice? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So 
We were at Chantal. So we're at my girlfriend's birthday. Chantal was on this podcast before. She's the best. She was the first one, right? Mm-hmm. My oh, girl. Oh, yeah. Um, so we were at her birthday in Las Vegas. And we were, of course, we we're a bunch of girls. So mm-hmm. they put us with a guy who has a table because we're just hot girls. So we, yeah. we've done someone a favor by showing up yeah. to party with them. <laughs> exactly. You're welcome. Yeah. And honestly, our group of friends are really friendly. So if you're fun, like we can have a good time with anyone. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. So it wasn't an issue. But there was one guy there who was really, really drunk. I don't even know if you remember. I didn't make, I tried not to make a big deal, but this guy was super duper duper drunk and um, like kind of like the the typical guy who came out of like Tennessee mm-hmm. or in Florida maybe and he's way drunk and he's there with like his, his boys yeah. and he thinks it's like a football game and he's like fucked up. Yeah. Real fucked up. Like slurring wants to fight I'm kind of guy. I remember. Like he's lit. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, I was standing around um, dancing, whatever. The guy turns around and sees my but like we're dancing, I'm wearing a bikini because we're at a pool party. He grabs my ass cheek, like slaps my ass, and then has like a handful and like jiggles my ass. I remember cheek. that. Oh, that was yes. at, that was at the um same place I met. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's another story. Yeah, it was there. <laughs> yeah, it was there. That we moved to that table probably. Yeah, but yeah, the guy grabbed my ass oh, cheek, whatever, shook it. And I turn around and I shove his shoulder. I'm like, don't touch me. Like, get yeah. your hand off me. Whatever. I'm pretty sure grabbing someone ass, someone's ass yeah, cheek no, and shaking it is like a felony. It's like sexual battery or some shit. Like, you really can't do that. Yeah. You probably shouldn't. Um, mm-hmm. But I pushed him off and the guy went to punch me. Like, he was like, ooh. Like, he was down. He was down to hit me in my face. And then luckily, like, I, I didn't I remember keep going. We, all, we all, like, we all swam to him like fucking bees. Like, yeah. we were like, don't you fucking, like, we, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I remember that now. Like, yeah. I was, I was so there. mad. But the worst part of this situation, besides the guy, it's when he paid $1,200 to the bouncer to stay in the club. That's the worst part because you've literally put a monetary value on my safety and my comfort. Exactly. Um, I feel like a lot of people, I don't know if there's even one listening, but if one of you people who is a security guy or a bouncer or someone at a bar is listening, you really suck when you let us deal with this shit and you don't take care of us and it's fucking disgraceful and there's no use to be that big, that strong yeah. and have that much power and be a fucking douche with it. Sorry, I'm drunk, so now I'm angry. I have a story about that too. With, <laughs> but with seriously, fucking, yeah, like, so often the bouncers are like, yeah, like, no, it's okay. Or like, you just can't keep shit. someone from like grabbing my, pro- like, yeah, like, what that's are you all you have for? to do. What am I doing wrong? You I'm have five one three. job, bro. I'm five three and my boobs bounce when I dance. Yeah. I'm ideal for a club setting. Yeah. Like, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It's, that's just one thing that pisses me. And I have, I can bounce off that story with another story when it comes I have to a bouncer bouncers. Story. Wait, hold on. I have a bouncer Let's story go. too. Yeah, bouncers, there's great responsibility with you guys. You guys, you like to take it out on young girls. Like, you like to take out the power on young girls when we actually really could use your help. So, exactly. So, here's a, yeah. here's an entitlement from a oh, guy che- at the club. Did we cheers oh, loud? Yeah, we cheers. Wait, let's do it in. I like the noise. ASMR. So, anyone who's counting can know what to <laughs> grow on. So, this was recent, actually. <sighs> <laughs> this was recent. Um, So... I'm in the club and I'm just like really just like chilling. I'm with my friend like she was hosting or something. In LA? In LA. So this is this is in LA. And this is probably about a month ago. So I'm just chilling. I'm, I'm really kind of minding my own business. I don't really feel like, you know, how I've been feeling about the clubs lately. So yeah. I've been in my own little zone. So he's like coming up to me asking me all these questions and I'm just like, "Okay, hey, yeah, I'm entertaining you, but I mean, after a certain time, I don't want to be screaming over the, you know, the the loud music." So I'm like, yeah. "Okay, are we done here or what? I didn't Ugh. say that though, but I was just like, okay, I've held conversations with you long enough. So, yeah. So he was just like, so can I get your number? I was like, no, I'm actually pretty good. And he was just like, what? Oh, what? He was like, I was just like, you, 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 you doing too much. You know, I'm not really interested. And he's just mm-hmm. like, well, fuck you then, bitch. And he does oh. like that. And then he points at me. And so I'm just like, you know, I am. I'm like, fuck you too. <laughs> but, so he leaves. He goes up to a bouncer. And he literally tells the bouncer that she tried to hit me. So the bouncer doesn't ask any fucking questions. And he tries to escort me out. And I was like, and everybody came. And everybody came. Like the, the, like the, the DJ. They were like, no, nah, she's not going anywhere. And the bouncer was like, she has to go. She hit him. I was like, they were like, are you serious? Nobody hit her. Nobody hit him. Like he's you lying. You would never. And I know you would never hit someone. I would never you would do never, that. I would. You yeah, would not do that. I would never that. do that. I would yeah. never do that. Like he was literally mad. So, but the fact that the bouncer didn't even ask me any questions. And but I didn't go anywhere. I, didn't, I was like, I'm not going. 
I got real. I was like, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I am enjoying my stay. <laughs> So, so like, I'm not, you know, like you know how when you like tense up and you like you either get real fucking ghetto or you get real proper. It's always it's good when you're proper. Yeah, exactly. When you're proper and people are angry, you look so oh, much yeah, better. Like, and I'm like, D- is, did, did, did he pay you to kick me out? He was like, he was like, bitch. He, the, the guy was like, bitch, you get out of, you get not here, you get not here. And I was just like, where am I going? Oh, you know. But the fact that the boss <laughs> didn't ask me any questions about that yeah. was nuts to me. And everybody was like, "Yeah, you're not going anywhere." And then at the end, I spoke to the bouncer and I was just like, "Look, I really don't appreciate you. Like, I would, I would have been embarrassed yeah. had I been like escorted out of a club that yeah. where I did nothing wrong. Where I literally just, I was Said like, no. and I was nice. You, yeah, I'm, you are I'm, nice. I'm, I'm Honestly, always, I'm the one who's questionable. Yeah, <laughs> you're, I, you're always nice. You would never do anything that like anyone. Deserve well, to yeah, punch exactly. In the face. So I would, I would never like do that. So I would never punch. So I told him, I, I went up to him on my own time, like while we're in the middle of the club. Like literally, I was like, look, I really didn't appreciate that. And and then he told me he was just like, you know, I'm sorry. I was just trying to de-escalate the situation because oh. he was yelling. I was like, but you don't, you don't, you don't escort me out. You escort that man out. Yeah. But because obviously he's the one who's rowdy. Because I was very calm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was just like, come oh. on. It was horrible. It was bad. It sucks. And I get it on one hand because I have friends who um, work in nightlife and own mm-hmm. nightclubs. So we know that men buy. Like yeah. they buy like a table at a nightclub is like five grand and six yeah. grand. So you want to appease them. But nobody would be there if it wasn't for women. Absolutely. Like you, if there, there would be no, no business. Th- that, that's the business of promoters too. Like promoters is just to get hot girls. Yeah. I swear if a hot girl really loved going out, she should be a promoter in L.A., Right. And take the hottest girls and literally go out and have fun with each other. All the time. Like, yeah. literally, that's it. Mary, you got a job. Oh, my God. That's, <laughs> we love you, Mary. I know. I miss her. I'm a bit buzzed. Right? Me too. This is this fun. Is good. We should do this every time. Cheers. Cheers. I like this right? little clink noise. I was drinking last time. Ooh, ooh. You were? Yeah. I remember I had those three wine coolers. Or was it two? Oh, yeah. Those wine coolers were really good, actually. That's how, that's how I got the inspiration for this. And I thought, I'm like, this is such like a miserable topic. Why don't we make it a little yeah, bit exactly. lighthearted? Yeah. I love a good metaphor, you know? Mm. So, Bouncer, when I was in LSU, this is the next one. Should we do one on? Yeah. Another one? <laughs> clink. <laughs> clink, clink. Mm. Yeah, I might be fucked up. Okay. When I was at LSU, this is the worst one ever of my life. I've told you this, I think. But um, I was tailgating. We mm-hmm. have a bar, Fred's in Tigerland. It's like the best LSU college bar ever. Very crowded. People get very drunk, especially in Louisiana. Like yeah. they, they drink a lot. Like you, you go out and you get smashed during football season. And it's not uncommon for men to be very smashed. Mm-hmm. Like in LA, I feel like people don't get wasted. I don't, I don't feel like that either. No, they, it's probably because they're doing drugs. Yeah. <laughs> probably because they're doing okay. But, balance. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. But in Louisiana, people drink to excess. Um, so one year, it was with my last boyfriend that I lived with. Um, we were at Fred's. And I was walking through the bar, and I remember my outfit because I really loved it. I had a white tank on, a lot of boobs going on, but what's new? <laughs> and I had a floral skirt, and it was a pleated skirt, so it kind of went out. And I thought the skirt was really girly and mm-hmm. cute, and then my top was, like, kind of feminine and sexy. So I thought it was really cute. Like, I was proud of this outfit. Yeah. And um, – Because I just felt like this matters, but I'm walking through the crowd, and a guy puts his hand up my skirt and, like, grazes my <gasps> – Vagina. Definitely happened to me a few times. Yeah, like grab my bunny. Mm-hmm. And I feel like. Your bunny? My bunny. That's what you call my it? My bunny, my Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> what should we call it? I like bunny. I don't know. You want to hear some embarrassing stuff? What? My mom called it. Oh, what? Oh, it's so bad. She called it a toonie. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. I need therapy for her calling my vagina a toonie. What the fuck is that? It sounds like tuna, tuna fish? which is mean. Mom, it's a little toony. Ew! <laughs> Ew! I could literally crawl into a, a hole and you die. My, I tell you, my gynecologist used to call my vagina my vajayjay. He's like, your vajayjay is fine. Oh, that's cute. I loved him though. That's cute. I, see, I think he was gay. You're the type of girl that can go to a guy gynecologist. I'm yeah. not. I'm like, yeah, uh, women only, please. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind it. I mean, one oh, guy, one guy, I went to that gyno. I told you, yeah, I remember. and he goes, "You want to see your uterus That's on an ultrasound?" Story. He was in there too long, and I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Yeah, exactly. That what is else? another story. Cheers, what cheers. What Gynos who are in there too long. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> hmm. It's crazy how many stories you'll have. Oh my god! About, but yeah, the LSU story. The oh, guy yeah. touched my badge, and it was he touched I was, your toonie. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. Right. You shouldn't have told me that word. <laughs> if my mom is listening, mom, quit calling you that. It's not. Just call it a vagina. Okay, another bad name for vagina. <laughs> if, listen to this one. You ever heard this one? Monkey. Monkey? Like, like not touch monkey. Touch that monkey? That monkey. That's from a rap song. I know the song. <laughs> no, but they say that. They'd be like, what's that monkey? Oh, what song is that? Touch that monkey. No, what's this? That yeah. monkey. <laughs> You're singing the other song. I know. Wait, I'm what's kidding. that song with the monkey, though? Monkey on the stick? <laughs> That's very Louisiana, you guys. <laughs> Wait, that is that monkey was the national stick. song. What monkey on the stick? No, monkey that's Louisiana. It's get it ready, get it ready, get, get it ready, ready. Oh no. yeah, yeah. That's all Louisiana. That's bounce music. So you know that's when I realized I love Lindsay when she we listen when I realized we listened to the same music. I was like, this bitch. <laughs> yeah. Oh Jesus oh, Christ! Sorry, she just refilled me. Um. So anyway, guy touches my whatever word you want to use. And I was like, I freak out. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And the guy like looks at me and he kind of has a smirk like, oh, well, you know, he's like yeah. smirking at me like I, it's hard to explain the smirk. Mm -hmm. And my boyfriend at the time is 6'8", 295. He's literally 6'8". Yeah. My boyfriend is a giant. Yeah. And I turn around and I go, babe, babe. Let me yeah. tap it on his shoulder. Babe, babe, this guy, he just like grabbed my vagina. Like, what the fuck? And he's like, what did he do? What did he do? And I was like, he grabbed my vagina. And he looks at him, he goes, if I hear you, you do that one more time. And I was like, wait, wait, no, he did it. So what do you, I was like, he did it. So this is the part where you smush him or something? Yeah. Like, I was like, no, 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 he no, did like, it. And he's like, up. And my boyfriend's like, well, what do you want me to do? Get kicked out of Fred's? <laughs> 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 oh, it's so bad. But I mean. Wait, what did you say to that? I would have been like, fuck you. I was now. like, what's the point of being 6'8"? Like, exactly. why am I weak? No, but a part of me, because you know I'm a rule follower. Yeah. A part of me inside is like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. You know, I don't want to break the rules either. What do you want so me to do? So the guy, I go outside and I talk to the bouncer and there's cops around because yeah. there's always detail cops with the security. They're all hanging. And I was like, this guy in there just like grabbed my vagina, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And um, they're like, what's he look like? I'm like, he's wearing khaki pants. He's got curly hair. He's short, little douche. And um, the guy was like, they're like, oh, okay, we can go look in there. But it's a big crowd. Everyone's got khaki shorts. It might be hard to find. And I was like, well, I can point him out. Like, yeah, I can exactly. literally point him out if you want. I can bring you to him. And they were like, well, are you over it yet? They said that? I will never, ever, ever forget that. That's what they said. Are you over it yet? And I was like. Mouth drop. Uh, I was so upset. I cried. I went home. I left Fred's. Yeah, instead of getting Cry. kicked out, we just fucking leave. Yeah, I left. Come. My boyfriend stayed. <laughs> You're lying. No, douchebag. We're not together anymore. He is a great guy, but he's he's actually a lot like me, so that's probably why he didn't want to fight someone and break the rules. He's a no, great guy. No, you're big as shit. You need to punch them. Yeah, like, I, I, I would punch for my lover, actually. Yeah. And I've been in situations where I've... She would punch for Tasha. I've gotten pushed by a guy before for mm -hmm. sticking up for my boyfriend, so I'll do it. But... um. Yeah, I was so upset. I went home and cried. It was the first time I ever had a migraine. Yeah. I'll never forget it. It was just like a special kind of tear. Yeah. It was a strong tear. Yeah. It was like a... Ooh. Just annoying. Yeah. It made you feel really like worthless. And I feel like we're always kind of writing off, oh, you know, so you got groped at a bar. But it that really it isn't right. fun. I don't know how to explain it, but you do. You feel like a bit worthless, yeah. especially if it's something that upset you to your your core. I just to have someone touch the most intimate areas of your body without your consent, without your warning, like, and then for nothing to happen to them, it just really makes you feel like, oh, so I don't fucking matter to you, people. Like that's, yeah. So the other day, me and Lindsay were talking in the car about. Um, remember how we were talking about how the death? No, this isn't even a story. This oh. well. I know. Yeah, I just felt like taking another exactly. one. <laughs> but we were talking about um, how we, how I feel about the death penalty. This, this would probably go too deep. But yeah, we were I, talking about this, which is weird. Right? Yeah. What's how, wrong with us? I know. Right. We're talking about random <laughs> shit. Uh, so we're talking about the death penalty and how I feel like, like what, that, what made me think of that was how you say there's nothing that happens to them. There's no mm -hmm. like you're not get, you're not getting reprimanded for anything that you're doing. Like I want at least a slap on the fucking wrist. Like get your ass kicked out so you yeah. know not to do that shit again. Yeah. Like that's all I'm asking for. You know. Let's cut off a finger like the old days. Exactly. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> the sure. rapes would be less and less few and few. And, and then I'll it, take one ball now <laughs> one ball later yeah exactly repeat offender see. saggy balls <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> but no and that goes back to uh also like 
just because what I'm wearing doesn't mean that you, it gives you a right to fucking touch me. Mm-hmm. I can be butt ass naked. You don't. Yeah. You don't have a right to touch me. And you there's know? a part of my memory, the fact that I remembered the outfit. the The part about me remembering the outfit seems stupid, but that part no, that has something to that, do with it. That part came to my hurt because in my mind, I thought I looked pretty. Mm-hmm. A lot of times when people have been cruel to me, I've thought I've looked pretty. Yeah. And in my idea. I had huge boobs, especially back then. I was even, like, I weighed a little more. I had huge boobs. And I just loved to show them off. But I really thought I looked pretty. I didn't think I looked like I wanted you to touch me against my will. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't look, I didn't think I looked like you should just grab me. But, you know. That also goes to, like, for me, I feel like how were people raised? How were men, men are all, it's, it goes back to how we're raised in a sense. Like men are raised, like, that's why I seen this thing was like, we got to stop letting, letting it be okay for men to be like, oh, he likes you. So he hits you. Right. Like, that's not cute. Don't teach your daughters that. Right. No. Tell him to use his fucking words and his actions. Like, don't yeah. you hit me. You know, don't. Pick a bouquet of flowers. Exactly. Pick a little flower out and give it to me. Show me love. That's cute. That's, that's what so Tosh cute. does. My Tosh little does puppy. That. He does. My dog is a man and he's the best. <laughs> he probably fix, picks little, uh. Leaves of grass because he can't see. <laughs> Probably eats them and then poops them out. That's like his best way. You guys, if you haven't, if you listen and you don't know me well, I have a blind dog named Tosh. But that is the man of my dreams. Oh, my, my God. My one-eyed is- blind dog, Tosh. I love him. I'm going to have him on the show soon. Really? Yeah, just like. say? Not a word. <laughs> if he could talk, he'd be like, hi, mom. That's the voice she always gives me. be like, Tosh. mom, I love you so much. Mm-hmm. I'm Tosh. Uh, hi, I'm Tosh. Yeah. So My little funny. baby. He would never assault anyone. When he sees dogs on the playground, he licks their ears and he licks their eyeballs. He's, he's actually a romantic. And I'm proud. That's my son. And I feel like, I God, think Josh is gay, yo. You ever wonder, stop, <laughs> which is fine if he is. No, nothing's my wrong baby. with that at all. But he's blind, so he's just, he's going for auras. <laughs> he's not really seeing what's up. <laughs> my baby bear. I love him so much. Where are we? So we're at, that's some of my stories. What's another one? You, I had another story. I have a story about this. I don't know how this may make me look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. It reminded me of Twin Peaks when we, you were talking about Twin Peaks. Okay, cheers. Cheers. So this isn't, I'm kind of in the wrong for this as well. Mm-hmm. So, and that's what goes, I think that with uh, Bill Cosby, I don't even want to get into that because I literally got into it with this guy the oh, other day with, okay. about Bill Cosby because I'm I'm a little indifferent. I don't know. I, okay. I, my okay. opinion is, you know, kind of semi-biased because not because I'm black because like, I mean, if you, whatever you've done, that doesn't, that doesn't, it shouldn't, the color shouldn't be like, okay, I shouldn't do this and that. Right. But like, you know, what I'm, you get what I'm trying to say? I, I know where you're getting with yes, this. Yes, exactly. I know where you're getting with this. I don't want him to die. I know where you're getting with this. I, there's a, the, I feel like there's a, a really hard position for people of color because they see him so easily prosecuted, mm-hmm. whereas white men who do yes. terrible shit when it's proven Literally. they don't. I get that That's part, and you from. still feel like he should be prosecuted yeah, for what he's done. I do. I do. I totally get that part, and that's a really tough. That's a, it's a t- it's a tough mm-hmm. dynamic, and it's just like when you see people. And I see, you- I trust me, I see both. Yeah, like I get it. I know, and that's that's that that's my that's my take on it. That, mm-hmm. What exactly what you just mm-hmm. said? How you said it so eloquently? Yeah, it's it's literally that. It's because it's because like you're a black man and how easily you were to get prosecuted. I, I just if he, if that happens to him, I hope it's the same prosecution. It's for it, Harvey. You know and it's I'm so saying? interesting now because we have the the Mr. Kavanaugh guy. Yes, exactly. And he's and having like people are so on his. They're like he's a hero. We feel terrible it's for this nuts. guy. It's it's, it's a lot nuts. different. It's nuts. It's almost interesting too because I read some articles. Um, Bill Cosby, al- although he is an American hero, he is very, he's very much still black. Mm-hmm. So he's he is easily for a lot of people. They can they can go against him. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, he's a black man, and that's America is. They have not always sided with black men, and oftentimes they don't. Of course, yeah, they never do. People so, don't realize the Civil War was literally like fucking sixty years. It ago. was like last week. It, it literally. Yeah. Like, I still. Have, it really was. I'm a history. Like, dad, I'm a history graduate. Exactly. I can tell you and that are still alive uh, to deal with that. Like it's yeah. just. It's not. No, it's not. It's yeah. something that's current and it's happening right now. And it's just like they have. Pe- they have little. They have white men. Getting out of jail time simply because they have a promising future. You, you heard about the man the other week. There's a man who assaulted a Native American woman. Um, he strangled her, choked her, kidnapped her. He, they gave him a pass. The judge used the word 
pass. A pass on my yeah. life. Yeah. On my are you like so if, I that's completely where I, understand. You know what I'm saying? Like you're I can't. De- you're upset with the sen- uh, you're upset with the injustices of yes, of, of the judicial sentencing. system. Yeah. yeah, sentencing a a black man and a white man. They're very different. But I I completely understand what you're saying and at the same time you can still hate be mad at him yeah, and hate I him for what he's done. It's like you need to you should go to jail. But I'm like I'm not saying that I want you to go to jail and I want you to rot in there. I just want the same sentencing for everybody. Yep. I completely understand anything, what you're you know? saying. So that's and it's it. interesting with the with the Kavanaugh guy because he's kind of there are so many people who think he's a hero and he's great because he is a white mm-hmm. dude. He went to a nice school. He's kind of he's he's not the ideal um what a, I don't know the word. The opposite of an accuser, a harasser. Mm. The abuser, the shithead. What do you Exactly that. <laughs> yeah. But we were I read an interesting article about ideal accusers mm-hmm. and ideal victims. Um cuz I don't know but if you've crying victim. Yeah, I don't know if you've paid attention um cuz I feel like I don't know if you've read about what's going on now. So with with him? Yeah. So this guy's getting really accused of assaulting okay, yeah. a woman pretty hard like pretty terribly. Um, but the woman especially, the woman is a psychologist. She's a, a doctorate in psych, I'm so drunk right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. She's like a doctorate in psychology. She's what people would consider an ideal victim. She's white. She's wealthy. Yeah. She has, she's, she's a woman who you would trust. Mm-hmm. Um, she's also got record of talking about this man as, um, what is the bad word I'm looking for? I'm buzzed, you guys. The bad word? Like an assaulter. What is the word? Uh, Opposite of victim, perpetrator, whatever. We're just I know what words you're talking about. <laughs> call him the perp, like <laughs> law and order. But she has rec- record from 2012 talking about this man being the perp before he ever was nominated for this office or Pedophile. however it works. Oh, no. No. They were in college. Oh, yeah. No. But the idea um, is that she's apparently the per- she's the perfect victim. She's yeah. the person that you would believe. She's intelligent, educated, wealthy. She doesn't have much to lose. She like, has no reason to lie. She really doesn't. It's like she really doesn't. And so I read this amazing article about would you believe this perfect victim or this man? He's mm-hmm. he's he's not necessarily imperfect, but he's a man. I don't know. It's just a really interesting case. It's such an interesting time, especially with Bill Cosby. I didn't want to talk about it too much because even this is such a stressful subject. It is. Like, I can't even deal with it because you've heard all the shit I've been through. Yeah, exactly. And so many women have been through stuff like this. So even a case like this is not only a trigger, but it's like... Uh, oh, it's a tr- and Yeah, it's a trigger. It, it's, a, it's definitely a trigger. And, it may, and like, just... <laughs> Did I spill? I spilled on my last podcast. Exactly. Just I spilled <laughs> coffee on my shirt wow. on the last one. Just by like Shit. us telling stories, it literally like I, we didn't plan this when we got here. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't. I didn't think of any stories. Like just from us telling stories, it's always another story to piggyback mm-hmm. off. Yeah. So it's like literally, it's what we go through on an everyday basis, and we're so numb to it, we don't even realize it's even. Ha- we know it, but we don't realize that it's actually happening to us. Yeah. Until we talk about, and it. we don't realize we don't think of it as like, oh, I was someone. Was like sexually batteried me or whatever that word. Okay, so let Assaulted me tell you the story. Tell me. All Ready? right. So remember, Clink. remember. I think I told you this. So y'all, I love drinking on a podcast. Exactly. Fuck, exactly. I feel like I'm way better. The best. Okay. No, yeah, you're great right now. You're Thanks. killing it. Thanks, Bay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she do that? You guys, I love her. Like Drake said. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you quoted Drake on the last podcast, and I died. What did Drake say? Did I don't he say know something? shit. I forgot it. Okay, um, good. So no. Shanty okay. Poppy. Okay. So I was 18 years old. God. And she had very know. long hair at that time. I have very long hair. Beautiful. Oh, um, beautiful. Thanks. Like Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Shayonte. Uh, but <laughs> but no, so this Okay, I don't know. How, this is going to make me sound like a bad person when I'm not, okay? But remember, did I tell you about this? The only time I ever kind of had like a sugar daddy situation, but it wasn't, I didn't give, I never gave him any sugar. No, maybe. I, I might have t- heard I think this I story. I about this. Yeah, so, but I told you that like, I literally didn't do anything with him. I just would go like, I met him while I was bartending. At <gasps> yeah, the, yeah, I, I might have heard this story. Tell me more. Yeah, so I met him while I was bartending and he was like this older, short ass man, like literally like four feet tall, five feet tall. You got a thing against short guys. Because, you know, look, short men only approach me. Where are the tall ones at? Like, where is <laughs> she's so tall? Over? That's the thing. Ex- exactly. It's like nothing but short men approach me, and I'm sick of it. Like, where is the tall 6'8 <laughs> man at? Like, they never come up to me. They come up to y'all. They they really they do. Don't. They I had don't. a man who came up to me recently you would be perfect with. Exactly. Like, 
You Short probably wouldn't even like him. Lose. Exactly. He's perfect, but you wouldn't like him. I would like him. Oh, okay. Tell him come my way. Okay. I'm looking. He's a raider. He's a raider. A yeah, raider. Tell, hit me up. Yeah, he's hot. Okay, go. Okay, but no. So <laughs> I was 18. I was just like, whatever. Like, yeah, this would be fun. Like, you know, he's like, yeah, let me take you out to dinner and bring all your friends. I'm like, okay, cool, perfect. You know, whatever, being stupid. So I bring all my friends. He like, we're like just literally talking. Like, he just, he sits right next to me and he does weird shit, like smell my hair. But I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, <laughs> We're in a Hushable. nice restaurant. Yeah, like, he did, he, did, he would, like, literally pull my hair and, like, smell it, you know? Tosh does And that then to just me. does that. <laughs> I can't And relate. so I'm like, okay, cool. So we leave out. I give him a hug. He hands me, like, $400. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this all the time. So we go on, like, a few days, and every single time, I'm never by myself. I'm always with, like, four other friends. So we're Sorry. all we're doing that. So, like, we're always at, like, restaurants. So he invites me out one time. So, like, it's some club downtown, like City Bar, something something yeah. weird. So, he invites me out. And he's so excited. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll go. He thinks I'm going to be alone. But I'm like, of course, I brought my friend. <laughs> and I never spoke spoke with him. We'd only talk about, like, meeting up, you know. And he'd be, like, oh, talking about dumb stuff. So, I, I brought, I brought like, two of my friends with me. And we go. And so, he hands me, like, $200. And this went on for, like, a month of him just, like, you know, like, me, us going on dinners, like, once a week or something. Yeah. I went out with him, like, four or five times. Yeah. Really. And was getting so he he hands me like two hundred dollars when we we're out. He's like, yeah, go get something you know to drink and blah blah and keep the rest. So I'm like, all right, bye, see you later. So he he's <laughs> like, oh, you're about to leave. You're about to leave. He gets this like little man complex. And it's like, oh, you're about to leave right now. You're leaving right now. You just got here. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm about to go. Like you know, like, I got the money. Let's dip. You know, I'm looking at my friends like, come Secure on, girls, let's bag. go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he's like. He was like, matter of fact, I'll walk you out. So I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. I'm not fucking mad at it. So because I was like, I still got my money. So um, <laughs> me and my friend would go to my friend's car, and he's like, he says, he literally, I quote, he was like, don't call me again unless you're ready to fuck. And he <gasps> slams the door in my face. Shy. I was like, okay, never call you again, you fucking short shit. <laughs> and so what What I brought that story up for, because I seen yeah, him as twin. <laughs> I was 18 years old. I was started working at Twin Peaks. Oh, so I was wow. like 21, 20, mm-hmm. 21, one of those. So I see him at Twin Peaks. I don't know if you remember this, but I like literally dropped a tray of shit. Like I dropped an entire tray of like, I had like condiments. I was like, because <laughs> he was walking up to me. And I was like, I was so like. No, he didn't. I didn't call him. I don't want to fuck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I dropped my Why stuff. I heard it. Exactly. I heard it. I picked it up. Fast forward to like three months later after I seen him in Twin Peaks. He went to jail for killing his wife. <laughs> killing his fucking wife, Stop. Lindsay. Stop. And the fact is that when I remember when I asked him, did he have a wife when we went out? He was like, no, nah, she, she, she left me. She left me a long time ago. This was 18. So he had gotten away. I was 18 years old. He had gotten away with this for a few years. He fucking killed oh, his wife. Oh, wow. I told I told everybody about him. I told my sister, not my mom. Now my I know where this story came it, in. That's oh where my it came God. from. Like, he literally, I think his wife <gasps> cheated. She said, he, he, he told me that she cheated. And she, he hasn't seen her since. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. <gasps> clink, life. clink, clink. You got one? Yeah. Let's oh my go. God. Well, so I, so like literally the fact, cause I told my sisters and my sister sent me a link to that. And he was just like, he was just a, a predominant figure in like the community. Like he was yeah. like, he was a fucking pastor too. He wasn't a pastor. He was like a deacon or something. And he was a lawyer. Of course. That's, that's what it brought another, me to That's Twin another Peak. podcast. He was a lawyer. It was just like a. Girl, it was bad. And I was like, this man killed his wife. You know, that's crazy. Because Twin Peaks, we had this couple that came in. They always came in really late. And they always looked like they smoked weed. This is the restaurant we worked at. Mm-hmm. Um, our b- old boss that we're still friends with will tell you. Mm-hmm. But um, the guy kept showing up without the woman. And we thought he murdered her for sure. And oh. he was in the <laughs> he was in jail. Or he had been... Um, there were articles about like him attempted murdering other people exactly so I, I thought she kept she didn't show up for a while and i thought he for sure murdered her and then Mur- oh yeah. that's that brings me to another one. <gasps> oh my god when i was in high school the oh god yeah you guys okay this is probably my biggest one i feel like we've accidentally covered all my crazy stories yeah this yeah, one i've heard this one right i yeah you had to have so when i was in high school i'm buzzed now <laughs> right but- when i was in high school i dated this guy um for three years he was older than me how much um, older? Three years older. Oh, three so years? I was 14, like he was 17, oh, which okay. is a, kind of a big gap. Yeah. Um, his dad worked as a police guy, mm-hmm. police man. <laughs> he was a police dude. <laughs> he was a police uh, something. Yeah. So um, 
our relationship got messy and he got really physical after a while. Yeah. And at one point he drove me out. One day we were fighting and we took a drive and he drove me out to kind of like, it was like an empty airport in Hammond, Louisiana. Wait, he took so you drunk. to an empty airport? Yeah, he took me like to an empty place and he was like, I'm going to kill you. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah. And he like, he like went to like, no, no, grab no, no, me no, or no. How did he, how did, how did I'm that verbiage come along? I'm buzzed now, but I remember he was like driving us and I, th- I don't remember, we weren't going there. Like we were going somewhere else. And he drove us to like an empty place. And then he made it, I don't rem- I can't remember because I'm drunk now, but if he choked me or like what happened, but that was the idea. Like that was what was happening. And oh I like, God. of course I said like, you know, I love you. I'll be with you, whatever. How poetic is that though? I mean, in, a, in a sadistic way, but like. Get the lit- fuck off no. my podcast. Okay, listen, listen, y'all, listen. Okay, listen to where I'm coming from. So it's like he literally he drives for himself. Somewhere. He didn't drink the poison like Romeo and Juliet. Okay, no, not poetic in a good way. There's a poetic bad. There's like bad poetry. Oh, like in maybe. A good po- yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like he just had a place to dump my bod but whatever yeah no it was crazy but that guy but um that was like one small instance i remember but when we were in high school we went to break up and i had a new boo of course you know me (laughs) everyone was down and ready (laughs) so i had a new boyfriend and um there was one day at school my ex came to school and he brought me a bullet and this was back before a vibrator no, bitch, a fucking bullet for oh. like a bullet for a, a gun. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip. I've been thinking about vibrators a lot lately. I'm because she told me I should start <laughs> masturbating. OK, I did oh. tell you that, but don't put oh, that okay. on there. Mm. Sorry. That'll be the next topic. But so he brought me a bullet to school, a bullet. And he said, this is for your new boyfriend. And what I did as this is how, this is why women are so, we're so interesting. We, we want to protect men even when they, when they're terrible. Yeah. Like we have this, That's we have so this true. pity for them and we want to, like we really want to make sure that they're not fucking up. Cause sometimes they, you feel like they're so dumb. Yeah. And I don't know what it is, but I went to, um, the office and I made a phone call on my cell phone and I, instead of telling the principal, Hey, this guy just gave me a bullet and yeah. ruining his school career, I called his father. And I yeah. said, hey, your son is acting crazy. I don't want him to get in trouble and ruin his life. He's a yeah. senior. Um, this is what he's done. The father was not grateful. The father came to the school, caused a scene. Um, they With who? With the assistant principal. I'm in the school in Louisiana. So yeah. I'm a girl telling him that the son of a sheriff or, or some kind of policeman. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know their fucking rank. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I don't know Deputy. the right. Yeah. <laughs> or for Ham and PD. I'll still, I put it on Twitter. And some another guy corroborated with my story who followed me on Twitter from high school. I literally tweeted about it a few weeks ago. But um, basically, they had this whole conversation. And I ended up having to stay home from school a few days. It wasn't considered a, a suspension. But they, they were not... They were not on this boy. They were they were they a were lot on, on me. A lot on when me. When he bought a bullet to school? A to- lot on me. A lot on me about I instigated it. I did all this shit. This guy literally oh threatened to kill God. me. And honestly, I think if it had happened now, things would be different. Oh, as they... Because now they're shit. shooting people at school. Like, all the time. But back then, they might have not as much. We had the Columbine, but I think that was, that was the most like we the could... the only thing. Yeah. What that happened. The most people would talk. So... It was really crazy. And at the time, I and I and I called his dad trying to protect his ass. Yes. I called him so he didn't get expelled and all this stuff. How dumb is this? That's what goes back to being raised. And you know what else is sick? You know what this guy's job now is? What? He's a cop. He's a cop. That can be a whole nother segment. He's a cop. And it's so crazy. And you wonder why women don't come forward. And this is what we're talking about now, like, about believing women. But, like... This guy's a cop. And I turned in this guy who literally threatened to kill me literally. and my boyfriend. And I got suspended for it, basically, with another term. But I did. And I got a, I got, I was the bad guy. Yeah. And now looking back as an adult woman, God, I want to, oh, I want to, I, I want to have so many conversations with so many people. With everybody at that school. I for do. One, his yeah. dad. Because I'm a strong girl now. You're not going to do that shit. His dad is the reason why he's like that. Oh yeah, his, his dad was terrible. Dad. His dad is terrible. His dad was terrible. Where was his mom at? Just probably, I, probably a victim, honestly. Probably she was probably victim. a victim. Exactly now that I look saying. back, yeah. I think she was a victim. She was definitely a victim. Oh, uh, but like, but that's just like listen to like the baby stories I've told and you have told. Mm-hmm. Yours are funnier than mine. <laughs> 
Yeah, yours are real deep. There was one more. Deep. There's one more I wanted to get out there. Is this girl, a photographer I followed on Instagram, posted a video oh. of. Did I show you this? I have a. I have a photography. You. I'm sure really? you have. You yeah, have, have one a, too. I have a, no, I have a, a, a incident with a guy. Oh, wait, yeah, I told you. About oh, that. I have another one with that too. But I'm not going to go. But mine was this guy posted a picture of this girl with bruises on her eye, and I I, I clicked on it because I'm like, why is this oh, his yeah. photo? And in the caption, I don't even remember this photographer, but he was like, this girl was supposed to shoot with me today, blah, blah, blah. And she walked outside of her apartment in Hollywood and she was assaulted by a stranger. This man just punched her in her face. She had, I don't know if she had to get, she had like hospitalization situations. Something happened. Yeah, I sound drunk. (laughs) Hospital will do. Sorry. But she had black eyes and they're like, we decided to capture this moment and make it special uh, of a really terrible situation. But this lady just like walked out of her house and got beat up. So she had a photo shoot after that? Yeah. But think about like. That's turning lemons into lemonade. (laughs) Shy. (laughs) It's sad. But you know, that's powerful. Like that photo is powerful. This girl walking out to go do a photo shoot and this guy fucking beats her up for a living. Yeah, that's hard. That's where I think entitlement comes in. Oh, definitely. Men beat up girls for no reason. That scares me with you. You know, because you have literally like 8 million followers and I'm just like, if somebody hurt my friend, I would kill them. You better. (laughs) I'd kill yours for sure. Cheers. Cheers. Don't ever so, mess with Shy. Yeah, do not. I'll be your worst me. enemy. I'll be like uh, <laughs> Jennifer Garner in that movie where she has those swords out of yeah. her back. <laughs> what movie was that? It's a new movie. I haven't seen it. Oh. But someone kills her kids. Ooh, I would come out with swords. I would shave my head. Exactly. Yeah, don't fuck with If us. you touch Shy, I would avenge <laughs> her. And, I, and I'm good. When I commit to something, I'm good at it. I was voted most ambitious in high school. And that's the truth. Remember the last truth. podcast? I was like, literally, like anything Lindsay says, she does. So if you fuck mm. with me and she says she will get you back, she will. Oh, yeah. I will cut you from your forehead <laughs> to your middle toe and rip you out look. on video camera. Listen, y'all. Look, yeah, don't that's ever. That's, that's it. But you know, it's crazy. I'm only like that with like people I love and my puppy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it literally us. Something happened with my dog one time. We were we were in the hood because I lived in the hood because I was broke, and um, someone. This big dog almost came to get my dog and they were like they were like crackhead people and they came to get my dog and I literally like picked him up and I was like I will literally murder you if you ever <laughs> if you hurt my dog if this dog hurts my dog you're done and these are people I would have normally been afraid of yeah and I had no fear at all I remember you telling me about that like, it was a thing because I went to her house later that day and she was just like I almost kick somebody's ass and I was just like what happened it's crazy but for myself I wouldn't but for my friends yeah. absolutely yeah so I have this one situation when it reminded me of the photo shoot so me and my friend Clark I, I, you met her before yeah, yeah. you met Clark Gorgeous. so me and Clark I know right so me and Clark <laughs> had this photo shoot and it was with this guy I don't he reached out to us I don't know how I forgot how like the it happened so we reached out to him and he had like he had an amazing like roster like what's it called a uh, portfolio. Yeah, an amazing yeah. portfolio. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what well, is a portfolio? Um, so he had an amazing portfolio. So we're like, yeah, we're about to get some dub. Like, we're about to get some pictures up yeah. in here. We're about to look nice, get some black and white. So we're like all like hype about this, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. She just poured a drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't cheers to this, this one. Oh. I like the sound. The clinks are getting harder and harder. It's like, did I break it? <laughs> Oh, I feel like the rest is for you because I've been drinking a lot. I would like to shout out Spa Girl Cocktails. Exactly. It's so delicious. It doesn't even this need a This isn't a paid promo either. We just have this in the studio and it's bomb. It is. It's so good. Yes. So we're like, sh- we're shooting. We're literally shooting. So he keeps adjusting his like pants. He's <laughs> adjusting his like, you know, pelvic area. His toonie. Yeah. <laughs> He's adjusting his toonie. Wait, what's he call his... <laughs> His male toonie. So um, <laughs> we're just like, what the fuck's going on here? So <laughs> I like leave out really quickly. So I leave. I'm like, I leave out. I'm like going to touch up my makeup or whatever. So I come back. Clark just has a completely different attitude. I oh, know. So I'm like, she's just like, yeah, let's wrap this up. Let's go. Let's wrap it up. So I'm like, why are you being so mean? Can you calm down? You're making me feel <laughs> awkward. You know, like I'm just literally like, can you calm down? So um, she, she was like, I'm going to explain it to you later. I'm explaining to you later. So before she even explains to me, this guy starts asking questions to me now. He's not even talking to Clark anymore. Mm-hmm. He's like, so can y'all touch each other a little more? Can you touch her a little, you know, 
little little more intimate, be more intimate with her and touch her. And I'm so I'm like, sure, whatever. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still thinking like, okay, whatever. I'm gonna touch my friend. I'm gonna give right. her like a, you know, like a hug. Yeah, like said, light yeah, like stuff. Light Does that make sense? He's like, no. He's like, no, go down some more. And I'm like, the fuck do you mean go down some more? So Clark's like, yeah, this is exactly why the fuck I'm saying let's go. Let's hurry, finish this up. So he, we're leaving, right? So he's like, she, he doesn't say anything else after that. So we're, I'm like, okay, we need to wrap this up and go. Like, let's see if the pictures still turn out nice. But we're like, let's just go. Dropbox before. Exactly. <laughs> Please send me the draw box before I go Sydney off on picks, your creepy uh, exactly. ass. Exactly. So, and it was like, Ugh. he literally had a really nice, it was a really nice home. It was a nice location. It had like literally set up lights, everything. It was nice. He definitely records pornos in there now that I think about it. But, um, so I'm leaving out. Clark was like, nah, this man just asked if we, if we fingered each other, if we could finger each other on set. <gasps> I'm like, why the fuck didn't you tell me that? Because I'm I'm looking at you like she was just like, because I, I didn't want to go off. Oh, but God. I end up already kind of going off. And I was like, what the fuck do you mean go lower? And he was like, don't worry about it. And I'm like, are you getting upset? Are you the one getting upset when you're telling me to do something that I don't want to do and that's inappropriate? Like, I come here for black and white. I had a photographer ask me for black and white. <laughs> She came here for black and whites. The disrespect. Now exactly. I get it. She came here for black you know and whites. I, I know. That's so disrespectful. Exactly. I had the view in my head. I, I was photographing with one guy, um, and he asked, <laughs> he goes, if you ever want a bunch of edits or for me to get you stuff really fast, I would love if you gave me a topless hug. And this was two years ago. I wasn't as stupid two years ago. I was still 25, 27. I was like, what? What? <laughs> he was like, well, you know, if you just want to give me a hug. And I was like, are you really going to ask me that? I was so rude. Was and he so serious? Oh, I yeah. And I, he'll tell you now. I was so rude and cold about it. And I literally told him, um, he, he asked me for a cover of a photo shoot. The next day I got a cover and a few thousand dollars. And I said, no. Mm-hmm. I was like, look, I'm not going to work with you because you're creepy. <laughs> yeah, you're a fucking creep. Yeah. And since then, we've had a, a paid job, but he behaved really well. But I told him, I was like, yeah. Photographers is a whole nother topic because I just seen uh, the other day, actually, this photographer, this woman, this like, she had like probably like 2 million followers. She was, she blasted this photographer. I'm a little, I'm lit. I'm Me too, huh? Right. So she blasted this photographer and was just like, he sells, beware of the people, the people you shoot with. He sells like your new, your, uh, like nipple, mm. nipple, uh, shots or right. whatever. Cause you know, you're like kind of free when you're with a of photographer. Course, yeah. Literally like you're moving around. Like, yeah. If your wardrobe, if you have a malfunction, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. It you know? is what it is. And it's just like, you never even think you, you think people have the type of decorum or the type of like, what's it called? Sense? Not even, yeah, kind of, I guess. But like, I don't know. Repertoire? Yeah, I, I guess. I felt like you wanted to say repertoire. Yeah, I did. I definitely wanted to We're say repertoire. This is so much fun being bus on a podcast. You guys, I'm lit. I just want you to know, for all the listeners who aren't on eyesappeartv.com where we stream this podcast, um, <laughs> we're, what is this? So we've had a whole bottle. It's 750 milliliters. So I'd say we have a eighth left. We do, and we're going to finish <laughs> That's that. That's good, huh? That is good. We're not quitters. Oh, sure. Yeah, we're from Louisiana, okay? Quitters. I'm a spitter. <laughs> Die. I was listening to our old podcast, and when you say little stuff, it's so good. <laughs> my sister loved it, too. Whatever my sister loves, I'm down with. Love She's her. the best. Wait, what were we talking about? What were we Photographers talking about? Photographers and how? Oh my yeah. god! One more story because we we've had so many fucking stories to that. How many stories have we had? Probably like fifteen. Probably. Yeah, literally. And I'm I honestly I know there's a million more. And we didn't even think hard. Yeah. Um, I didn't write anything down. There was one girl. She probably she, never does. Yeah, I'm lazy. <laughs> um, this one girl was on America's Next Top Model, uh-huh. and I followed her and a photographer, and apparently they both shot together. And one time she she was online. She was like this guy. Literally, like, fingered me at a shoot. Like, we were shooting, Wait, and what? he, yeah, apparently, they were at a shoot, and he literally like, came up to her and, like, literally inserted his finger inside of vagina. And, look, this was, like, a year ago, and he deleted it. So I knew them both. And he deleted his account, and it was gone for a while, and it was, like, and honestly, I believed, I believed her, because who lies about what that? What did she do? She said she freaked out, left the shoot, blah, 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 and she oh posted about it. She was, like, I want to keep everyone else safe. And um, he deleted his account for a while. And he um, came back in full force like nothing happened, huh? He did come back. 
But I haven't really followed him now. I think he he, he has, has a, a reputation for himself. Yeah, now yeah. he does. But I would love. I should have her on too, because she would be so good. The America's Next Top Model situation is so interesting. You know, I, I went to the final four of America's Next Top Model, not on the show. Right? <laughs> Why wouldn't they pick you, idiots? Uh, Tyra's a bitch. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love she Tyra. She produced the show I almost did. <laughs> really? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, show. Yeah. That one, she produced that? Mm-hmm. I think me, I mean, I follow her. I think she follows me too on Twitter. She should. We're cool now. But she should have picked you. Don't blame her. Blame everyone else. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I was just kidding. I love Tyra. Yeah. But no, like it was, yeah. You would murder that show. That's probably why you couldn't be on it. Exactly. Maybe Cheers what competition? Is there any more? I want to finish the bottle before we're done. Yeah. Okay. I Ubered here, you guys. Um, just just so you know, if you ever want to drink, don't drive. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> Profound. Very, you want some what else? other stories do we have? That's good. Oh, jeez. I've knocked out my main stories for sure. Yeah, I feel like I've gotten a lot of them too. I'm the type it's like of therapy. Female, though, yeah, it is. I'm the type of female though that like it's really hard to like offend me in a sense you know mm -hmm. i don't really get offended that easily because i like brush so much shit under the rug in a yeah. sense and i, I play me. around a, yeah so like i pl I play around a lot so sometimes i'm like so i'll say some shit but and i don't expect a man to react a certain way but i'm like oh shit i can't say that because he they take yeah, it you're seriously. flirty yeah, yeah i'm flirty in a funny way though so i don't really when someone takes it seriously i'm like oh i was just kidding you know so it's just i don't know the I've had to draw the line because I remember one time. Okay, I do have a story here. Oh God! God, this is where I was. Fu <laughs> where funny goes wrong, y'all. So I don't think I even told you this one. So my okay. car got towed at my friend. We were going, literally going to Drake's uh, Drake house party, right? So I like pull up to my friend's house real quick. I park here for like literally thirty minutes. My car gets towed while we're upstairs, like getting ready. Yeah. I come down. I'm like, yeah, you about to go to Drake, but um, shout out to Drake, um. <laughs> Champagne poppy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so my car gets towed. We go to the tow place. I don't have my registration. Some I don't know why I don't have my registration, but I don't have it. So he w really was, I wasn't supposed to get my car. Yeah. So I literally made a joke. I was like, first of all, I think hand jobs are so, I give horrible hand jobs. <laughs> so that's, okay, sorry. But I'm just saying, I was just making a joke. I was like, hey, I, I, he was like, you don't have your registration. I was like, hey, I'll give you a hand job. And I was you playing. do say dumb stuff. I say like dumb that. shit yeah. like that that you shouldn't say. You know, you really shouldn't say those the, things. The thing is, though, when you say it, you're not coming from the group that is assaulted, yeah, murder, I've never, and I've rape never on the regular. Anything like that. So yeah. it does so come from a place of humor because statistically, you're not going to murder someone. Yeah, you're I not going to rape them or kill them. So it, it does come off funnier because that's the truth. And it's also my sense of humor in a sense too. Not, yeah, not a sexual sense of humor, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah you have I to feel explain it's important to say. And you have to explain that to people because it isn't like that isn't something that you should say. We don't when you. Men don't fear you. Yeah. That's the difference. That is true. And, and but bottom line. This is this story which made me realize I can't play like that. And this happened like probably like three, four years what ago. What happened? He wanted to. So I was like, I'll give you a hand job. And he was just like, no, nah, ha, 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 laughed it off. But when I went, he was like, I'll give you your car though. So he was like, come in, come in my office and come sign some papers. Yeah. So he literally, he was like, he got he had the papers out and he was like, you know, I'm really not supposed to give you your car back. So uh what you what you gonna do? Oh! I was like, what? Oh no! I literally was like, "What?" Yeah, I was like, "I, I was just kidding." Like I was, and ever since that, I haven't done anything because I, because he's, I was literally afraid. Like I was afraid, and you know that story about the yeah. guy who that's like so, my guy, the bar. Yeah, exactly. That's so what it reminds like, me of. I, I, I was like, I, I was, I was just, I was just playing with you. Like you know, I don't, I can't, you know, like I wouldn't, I really wouldn't do that. I was just playing. He was like, "Well, you shouldn't be playing like that." <gasps> And I was just like, you're right, you know, but here are the papers I signed. And like, he was just like, yeah, I was like, let me get my shit and go. And I was like, bye. Thank you so much. Uh, and he literally would have been down. And I honestly could have fucking sued his ass for if I was to do a sexual favor or him to fucking accept that. <laughs> or to sue that whole person. And I could be rich right now. You know, honestly, I didn't think about it the smart you way. moron. <laughs> We're from Louisiana. Okay. We need to get it. Get it how we live. Exactly. Anyway. I feel like we've done an amazing job. Yeah, this at least is a at getting lot drunk. Of We're at ten a drunk, <laughs> um, and we've been at least a nine at telling good stories. Yeah, but seriously, the theme of this show was really to just to think about how many stories of really inappropriate things that happen to people mm -hmm. you know. And I encourage any men to listen, um, any men that are listening. Sorry, I'm buzz to ask women in their life. Hey, have you ever experienced something like this? Like, have you ever felt uncomfortable at work? And I feel like you'll understand where we're coming from. Yeah. 
when we talk about believing survivors and realizing it's not a witch hunt. It's just, it's been thousands of years of no one saying shit. Yeah. And now it's just kind of coming to a head. It seems like a lot, but honestly, women have dealt with so much and never said anything. And Sometimes all you need is one voice. That's sometimes, that's it. What is that? I don't know. A Disney Channel? <laughs> is it some Disney Channel tagline? Get the fuck out of All here. All you need, we need to is get off. one. We're gonna, so anyway, we're going to go out to happy hour. Thank yeah. you guys so much for listening. Please rate and subscribe <laughs> even to, in our drunkenness. And follow my best friend, shy.f. On Instagram. Yeah, holler at your girl. Holler at your girl. <laughs> we love you so much. Thank you for listening. EyesUpHereTV.com. Bye. Bye.